Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Lord Rick of Angel of Thy Night Radio. And tonight's episode is going to be a lot about a lot of different things. A few articles that I sent out. I'm going to discuss a few new features on our website. And discuss about our paranormal trip that's coming up in Miami. Which is a pretty major investigation considering we're traveling a few hundred miles to go do it. As you know, there's going to be a lot of changes within our organization. The first change, I guess you could say, is that the Paranormal and Ghost Society will be relocating out west. So I'll be covering the west coast. California, Oregon, Washington, Utah, Nevada, New Mexico. There's a lot of mines. There's a lot of caverns. A lot of old ghost towns and cemeteries. The woods type of woods that's out west is a type that you go in and you never come out of. I mean, we're looking at a lot of Bigfoot sightings, a lot of UFO activity. What I'm about to do is open a doorway to this paranormal organization. And, you know, it's a, it's a lot of investigations coming up when I go out west. I'm really looking forward to it. If you didn't get involved while I was in Florida, um, now's the time to get involved. I got about six more months to do what I have to do out here, and then it's time to move on. Um, I would like to see more involvement in the organization. As of now, Jason, known as the Juggernaut, he's going to be moving up north. However, he did investigate on and off for us for the last few years, and you know, I wish him the best of luck. It really hurts as a paranormal investigator to lose another investigator on your team that you've camped out with, that you hike with, you know, that you share, you share a bunch of brews together and you smoke up and, you know, those times are the times that you appreciate is being able to share the paranormal with another friend. To both see something thrown at you or something strange together, it's, it's what makes your journeys fulfilled. And... You know, I hate to lose friends, but, you know, it's a new destiny, and we'll have new investigators join us, and new friendships will form, and new adventures. So, I guess what I'm trying to say is, for the next six months in Florida, I would like to find a few new investigators to join our team. There's no experience required, but, you know, you got to be strong to a point, in the sense that you got to climb, hike, jog, walk long hours be able to work through the night because some of our investigations will start at 8 p.m. and we will not get home till 8 in the morning so I need someone who can focus and help out on the team that's the first announcement the second announcement is I am gonna be throwing a Halloween party I throw one almost every year sometimes they're very large and it's a lot of fun you know people come dressed up it's going to be mid-October. I'm going to invite all my friends, as many as possible. It's probably the last party I'm ever going to have in Florida. It's probably going to be the only party I have this year. Um, there will be door prizes, food, but I ask everybody brings a food or a drink because I do plan on having a lot of people show for this. Um, but I'm definitely looking forward to hosting it. It's going to be my going away party. For those who really never got involved but have been keeping track of the Paranormal and Ghost Society forums and just want to meet me and say hi and see what's up and talk a little bit. And that's all the party's really for is just to have a good old time. Um, you know, drink a few beers with the guys, smoke up, have a good time. So I am posting this or actually saying it ahead of time because I don't want any excuses, anybody to back out. So if you're in Central Florida and you want to come to our Halloween event, it's going to be probably mid-October. I'll have more information available for you. On to other things. As you know, if you're a member of our Paranormal Forums, I have announced that I will be going Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to Miami and Key Largo. It's a vacation for me. Every paranormal investigator needs to travel. It's just it's in our blood. But, you know, while I'm on that vacation, I have put together and pieced together a very stellar investigation. We have not investigated in a couple months for a lot of reasons. Gas prices, vehicle problems, lack of investigators, lack of funds. And, you know, I have a little extra funding. And I'm able to actually go out there and 
put together a nice investigation for the website and our fans. But I'm going to try to visit a few places. Um, I'll probably do them by myself. I don't honestly have any investigators. I, it's very hard to find people down south who want to get into this. Most people are part of the ghost tour industry. And then again, you know, a lot of people, you know, they start forming their own paranormal groups, which really hurts groups like mine who are short-handed. And, you know, it's, you're, you're better off joining an organization that's been around for years. And, you know, I've always treated my investigators quite equal. There is nobody greater than anybody. You know, I love to see my investigators excel on the investigations and see things and do things and travel and have a good time. And that's all it's about. So definitely looking for anybody in the Miami area who wants to help out. If you get this message before tomorrow night, I would appreciate it. Next off, other issues. I had the meet up tonight. Nobody showed. I'm not embarrassed to say nobody showed. It, what's embarrassing is the lack of participation within our organization. You know, we got a great group. I mean, we're a mix of everything. We do a little bit here, a little bit there, but... We try to make it pleasant for everybody. You know, there's not many groups that will say, hey, come on out for a few drinks. Let's play pool. Let's play darts. And, you know, I always believe in looking at people eye to eye. And it's the same way with the paranormal. I face it head on. And if some of you locals can't show to the meetup and at least hear what I got to say, it's, you know, it's ignorance. So I showed up. Lady, the waitress actually gave me my drinks free tonight. She just said it's on the house because I'm always showing up by myself and people aren't showing. And, you know, it's not about me. If more people showed, they can meet each other, you know, find people to share common interests with. And just go out there and explore places and go to haunted locations and such. That's all it's really about. And you can't develop the trust if you never meet. But people in Central Florida, they're just so... I mean, they just don't get involved with the paranormal. And when they do, it's the last, I don't know, the last couple months I've seen two new groups form around me. And I think, you know, you're only forming because of our existence. You, you know, you've seen my site and you said, hey, I could do this on my own. But it doesn't work unless you work together. And there's people around here, you know, they're not being original. And I, in my opinion, be a part of something. Show to the meetup, show to the investigation, post on our boards, you know, play for our, the Paranormal Ghost Society's Phantoms Recreational League. Get involved with us, and that's all I really ask. I'm not here to make enemies across the web. I would like people to be friends, and I like everybody to take a peaceful approach and try to get along. And our organization has been around for a very long time. We're stable. We've done a lot of investigations. We offer a lot of different things. We've opened up a few new forums because we just want to get the word out. And that's the whole thing. And we want people to learn about who we are and what we're about. And of course, those links to the forum are in our MySpace group. And, you know, you can join them. That's what they're there for. And in the process, you might make a few friends you really want to get hot on the articles, go to our Yahoo group, or our MSN group, um, our Google group too. You know, I do, some days I do 30 to 40 articles. You know, and it's just for educational purposes only. We send out articles so people can read about the different things that go on. You know, in our paranormal world, they can learn off it. They might even get a few places that they can explore and investigate themselves. So, you know, I try to... I try to make the group as pleasant as possible, and when I don't see people getting involved, you know, it, it can hurt an organization like ours. It really can. Also, you know, I, I'm very proud. We have a couple new bands who are doing music for our site, and they're, you know, they're great bands, and I should have a few more, and Paranormal Ghost Society is always looking to promote bands and indie artists and, you know, people who have... For example, let's say you play at a nightclub and, you know, you want your music out there a little bit so others look at it and look at you. This is a good way to do it. We get a lot of hits on our site. We're always looking to promote bands. And, yeah, I got a couple big ones I've talked to recently and who knows what can come of it. But I help them, they help me. It's all about promoting one another. And, you know, in our hot link section of our site, we like to post links to other groups and such. 
because we want to share the wealth of information that goes across the web. Also, if some of you have not heard, I have just opened up recently, a couple weeks ago, a bulletin board system. It's a no censorship forum. Actually, it's a series of forums. Um, pretty advanced. It's you know you can have avatars, profiles, pictures. You can post a quote, a signature, smileys. Um, images embedded in email or within the forums you get a mailbox and I installed it and you know I programmed it and did all that and my members are happy at least the people that I approved and the people that joined it and of course the bulletin board system is not just for me it's for personal friends investigators some members if I can recognize your email address and you've been on a while and I know you I'll let you on but it's a private bulletin board system. Um, no, you know, there's not going to be any outsiders on the board. It's not going to be any flaming. It's a very private board which consists basically of my friends and my most loyal members. There's still about 40 of you I've talked to that I know that I'd like to see you sign up. Um, you know, it's a, it's a great forum. It's a great series of forums. We've got a lot of different topics going on, a lot of different posts. I mean, the features that are on there are unbelievable. The theme fits our own website, you know, black background with a little bit of tint of red in it. And, you know, it's just, it's a great board. And that is our main discussion forum now. And, you know, there, you don't have to worry about toss. There's no censorship. You can swear all you want, vent all you want, talk about your day, or just talk about the paranormal. But that's my reward to my members. And, you know, hopefully some of you join it. I think you'll like it. I've got a lot of compliments. And I don't have that many members, but I'd say at least 15 people on that board had said great job. So, you know, we're on the dawn of a new age. We've got a lot of things going on. You know, i got the radio show. i got a huge investigation this weekend, which should spark some interest with TV producers um, it's going to start picking up I'm going to be doing a lot more investigations I ended up getting a different vehicle that's a lot better on gas so that I would be able to travel around Florida probably be going up to Tampa Bay definitely Tampa Bay because I got some very important places to check out out there so the Paranormal Ghost Society they're, you know, we're always working to make you happy we got our sports team, we got our bulletin board system, we open new forms we're expanding and it's not because we're about egos and making money because we don't get paid to do this uh, I don't constitute 30 to 35 dollars in donations every few months making a lot of money a lot of what I do, the website, the bulletin boards, the time and effort, it all comes out of my pocket and I just want the world to know this I want the world to know that you know I expend money out of my pocket to make others happy and I hope that others out there can appreciate it um, also on the subscriptions it's $4.95 a month to access our archives that way you can look at them anytime sign in anytime you want you might not feel it's worth it but 50,000 ghost photos some are orbs some are apparitions some are ectoplasm some are just oddities but it doesn't matter the point is, is that $4.95 a month is the same as giving a donation to us. Um, I created a sample page so some of you could see the work that I do. And just so it shows, you know, we do work hard. We do visit places. We do travel. And that our work is pretty solid that we also do. I'm not ashamed of my work. I love working with ghosts. I can care less whether I'm famous or rich or whatever. It's priceless when you're sitting in a cemetery, you see some dark shadow just hovering across the ground. It's phenomenal. And you know you've seen it. You weren't high, you weren't stoned, you had another person with you who was sane as well. And when you see something like that, it makes you want to go out and see more. And when I go to California, it's going to be my most dangerous journey of journeys. I know it. I'm dealing with canyons, mountain lions, bear vast woods I could get lost I could die I could die out in the desert um, just so many unlimited possibilities when you go out west you're playing with fire because you're dealing with a lot 
of mountains, a lot of wilderness. And you got ghost towns that sit out in the middle of nowhere. So I've been training myself up in New York and Florida and Pennsylvania. I've been training myself for California. This is what I've worked for. And, you know, I'm going out there and I'm, and I'm going out there on a good note. I got a place, a town I have in mind where I'm going to live. Um, you know, I'll be going out to a lot of places. San Francisco, all the little historical sites. Sacramento, maybe the Redwoods Forest, might go to Las Vegas every every now and then, do some places, some ghost towns outside Las Vegas, but I'm going to do it, and people are going to enjoy it on the website, and you know, I suggest that some of you, if you've not gotten involved, get involved with us, we're not a bad group, we're very eccentric, we do things very differently around here, that's all, and that's what makes us unique, and all the more reason to join the more the merrier, right? Also, with our radio show, I know that I have not put a lot of episodes out, and honestly, you know, I get pretty busy. I still got a site update to do. I got to get this police station we investigated on the site. I just get so busy. I, I get a lot of emails, a lot of problems I deal with in the forums, people not obeying rules complaints, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's it's really hard being a paranormal founder because you have to deal with so much. It's not just a matter of, hey, let's go to the cemetery and take ghost pics. Lot it entails, you know, there's traveling, there's funding involved, there's, you know, running the site, dealing with a lot of people. You gotta, you gotta be a people person to do what I do. It's more peaceful to deal with ghosts, but unfortunately, you know, we need investigators, we need fans, we need people to donate. We're an organization, so we all, you know, do our part as a group. Yeah, the question is, is how many of you actually sit back and read all the articles that I send on my list? You know, so I, I send them out maybe to prepare people out there, you know, about global warming, space mysteries, and if you recently looked, they found another water planet. You know, chances are, if the planet has water, it has life. It's very easy, actually, to spot a water planet. It looks much like Earth. It's blue, which means it has an atmosphere, it has water. So really, you know, there is obviously life out there in the universe. And I think that NASA should start focusing on trying to go to these places, but I don't think it's ever going to happen. I think mankind has doomed himself, to be honest with you. Yeah, it's really strange being a paranormal founder, too. You know, I'm a pretty open-minded guy. I've always been an open-minded person for the most part. Even at a, as a kid, ghosts, they fascinated me. Demons, devils, they put all that. And as a child, I just wanted to learn so much. And when my father introduced me to the paranormal world a little bit, you know, I, I got a taste of it at a young age. And you know, I think there's a lot of information people need to learn about that exists on Earth. And you know, some people don't want to know what goes on or how the world works. They, you know, they fear the paranormal. But anyways, I get a lot of letters, and you know, some people write me and. And they say demons are ruining their lives and ghosts and they got hauntings and this problem and that problem. And yeah, I'm a pretty open and I'm a good listener. But you know what people need to understand is that we're there to investigate it and help you cope with it through counseling possibly. And you know, we're also there to cleanse a house or at least make it so that it's livable. So if you got a haunted place or something's going on with your property or you need help, don't be afraid to email us. But at the same time, you know, let's keep things reasonable. I mean, if you want, if you're out of state and you live in Kansas, Texas, Nebraska, and you want me to actually physically come to you, technically you as the client would have to pay our travel costs. And, you know, it's a lot different when you know, you're an investigator for the organization and you want to put something together in your state. I'll come to you and raise funding if possible. But when it deals with a client, and let's say you want me to come to your house out in 
talk to you, you want me to investigate it, cleanse it, get rid of what's there, etc., etc., or you want me to do an exorcism, or, you know, you need my help, whatever the case is, you know, I do ask that you cover travel costs, and that's all I ask for. We're not out to make money or become super popular or anything like that, but, you know, we like to help people out there, and I can help just about anybody as long as, you know, you're somebody who's serious about calling upon our organization and you're willing to at least meet me halfway, I'll be more than happy to do it for you. Because I had a lot of emails of people wanting me to come to them recently, and, and I can't do it because we, we're a low-funded organization. So our funding for traveling has to come from the client itself. And I know client sounds all business orientated, but I'm just, it's a figure of speech, I guess you could say, you know, you're the victim of possible demon possession or hauntings and you know we're the type of people that's going to come in there and we're going to help you you know we're going to help you deal with the healing process we're going to find out what's going on we're going to find out what that whistling is in the attic that's what we're there for so don't be afraid to contest contact us we're a great organization i reply to all emails that i that get sent to me and that's what keeps me busy this is a 40 hour a week job i spent about 40 hours working on this between the website, the forums, answering emails all day long, and I do it voluntarily. We don't really make money at this, and I think that it's well deserved that we start getting investigators, people to show to parties, meet up, hear what I gotta say, request us if they need us to come to them, and so on. We, you know, we want to be able to gain some momentum in the paranormal community because for so many years we've done so much for it. And all we ask in return is that you appreciate us and that you respect us. And you may not agree with us, but this is, you know, our traditions, our organization. It's ran fully by me. I mean, this is one of the only paranormal groups that has its founder as its lead investigator currently. And, you know, especially at this rate, being that we've done 700-something investigations, being that we've been around for so many years, it's it's becoming like the old days when I used to go out alone and I'm back at it by myself and you know it's hard it's really hard to try to play Superman when everybody should be doing their part so now that that's all out of the way and forgive me for the way I speak I currently don't have very good sound recording equipment so it's a little fuzzy it's a little broken but it's gonna have to work Ghostbusters aren't made to be rich, unless you're at TAPS or you're going, you know, you're going out and you're sponsored by a major TV network. You know, it's a very hard career to work with. I get so many people say, you know, what's it entail being a Ghostbuster? And what it entails is a lot of commitment. I mean, there's, you know, definitely you don't do it for the money, I can tell you that. You do it because you want to make a difference, just like any discoverer you know, who discovers another country or an island. And, you know, each time I go out every other weekend, this is what I do. I make discoveries about the paranormal world we live in. Also, if you have not done so, Mira, a very good friend of mine, she runs the Lord Rick fan group. Basically, it's just for people who are fans of my work, who want to find out what's going on with the Paranormal Ghost Society, and... You know, there's a lot of off-topic sort of messages, just like jokes and just daily discussions about life. And, you know, nobody's unequal. It's just, it's a group that's designed to help me out a little bit when I need friends to talk to, investigators and such. You know, so we got a lot of different things going on. And I do feel that if you don't get involved, you're truly missing out. Because we're trying to make it fun, we're trying to base it on, you know, finding friendships. And, you know, that's what it's about being as a paranormal family. Now, going on to articles, there's been quite a few UFO articles recently posted. But anyways, the main one that I've been noticing lately is all about Roswell, how it's the 60th anniversary. And they had their festival up there. And they want to open museums, and it's just, it's just endless uh, upon endless 
money-making opportunities. I don't feel that's right to capitalize on it. I do, however, think that a UFO did crash back in 47. I think that we shot it down, disabled it. I think it split in two parts. I think alien bodies were retrieved. I do think it actually happened. Um, they still guard the ridge today. You're really not supposed to be there. It's just, it's just one of those things that it happened. A lot of people that the veterans are starting to confess, saying that it really was a UFO and there was alien bodies. A lot of them are confessing because they're on their deathbeds. They have nothing more to fear. And, you know, when you're about to die, you become desperate. And, you know, you don't want that on your conscience, so you start speaking the truth about your past. It's one of the greatest secrets that this country has kept. It did happen. I do believe it. And when you look at all the facts. But, you know, I guess, I guess what burns me up with Roswell is it's just becoming a big tourist attraction. And, you know, it's, it's nice that they're being able to promote it to get the word out there. But, you know, the thing is, is that people like us are the ones who go out there and, you know, we're not trying to exploit what happened. We're just trying to make the truth known to the public. So, it's a little bit different what we do and in what they're doing. But I do have plans eventually to go to the Roswell Festival, probably in a few years. Might go up to Roswell, New Mexico. Might investigate that. I got a friend who lives up there. She's a great member. And she's got some haunted places and she runs a group in her area. So, yeah, I might come visit her and she can show me some places. So, you know, that's the nice thing about running the forum is people live all over the country and you know, we get an opportunity to get together and we get to meet and do these paranormal journeys. So, I thought, you know, people would like to know that it was a 60th anniversary. And you know, there's a lot of material on Roswell. Some of it's true, some of it's not. But you can read the facts based on statements of people who came forward. It sounds very likely that this did happen and that it was not in fact a weather balloon because after Roswell if you notice a lot of different UFO crashes happened for example Kecksburg that's another one that possibly happened where the UFO actually crashed on into the lake and that's not the only case of something happening like this so do your research you'll be pretty surprised about how many UFO crashes and how many retrievals have occurred throughout the world then we have an article about a ghost hunt in the caves that I sent out. You know, it's from Ghost Hunter Southwest, and you know, they're going to be checking out a gorge in a cave that's supposedly supposed to be haunted. Um, I guess their research is basically, can caves be haunted? My answer to that is yes, anything can be haunted. What's any different from caves to a house to a building to a cemetery to woods? It's not any different. Caves, some of them go on one mile, two miles, 40 miles, 50 miles. Some caves, if you if you start digging in the rocks, you find other chambers and caves. Um, great movie to watch is The Descent. It's about a cave. It's about some girls who go spelunking. And they go down, you know, they crawl through this little hole in this chamber one by one. And it collapses on them. And they start working their way into the subterranean levels deep underground through all the caverns and it just turns out something is lurking down there with them and it knocks them off one by one so you know you don't just have ghosts in caves you have other things too such as for example Bigfoot giants demonic entities um, besides the ghost you know you have other things too like shadow beings and other creatures possibly from other worlds, maybe even alien life. You know, so I'm real touchy on the cave issue. I love to do caves. Um, I'm very leery of them because sometimes you get giant bears that live in them. Yeah, you know, it's not cool to get attacked by something coming at you in the dark and you have nowhere to run. You know, it's 
the animal feels threatened you're in its domain. So you got to be careful what caves you investigate if you're a ghost hunter. And then I sent out another article called Divers Find Lakes Lost Village. It's about a team of divers, they set out to solve the mystery of a drowned village of Bowwood in Wiltshire. And they had found the remains of buildings underneath the lake, which are over 250 years ago. And people say, well, not much you could change in a couple hundred years, but it's not true. The lakes dry up, lakes form, and sometimes things end up being buried in the, in the land from earthquakes, monsoons, flooding, and such. And they did find a couple cottages, a church that is completely submerged in water in the lake. It just tells you about the earth we live on. We have a lot to discover. It's like off the coast of Miami. They have underwater ruins a mile or two off the coast. And there's a runway and and you know they don't know if this is Atlantis and last I heard about two years ago when it was discovered that they would be doing archaeological excavations of it and I never heard nothing else about it and if I had a boat and I knew the exact location I'd go out there and I'd scuba dive out in Miami and I would love to just swim across these rooms that's a mile or two off and so that tells you right there back a few hundred thousand you know hundred thousand years ago or maybe a few thousand years ago at that time that was beachfront property and these structures did exist and the ocean was not there at that present time but then you know you take the ocean two more miles in it just shows you that the the global warming is causing flooding it's causing oceans to rise seems like there's more water than there is land on earth of course that's a, a lot of ice is melting in the arctic it's not as cold as it used to be and you know i fear that cities like new york tampa bay boston all these little ocean cities are probably one day going to be underwater and of course us humans will try to deter it with levees and we'll build walls and such to keep the water out but you know one good storm surge and it's done you'll get another Katrina like New Orleans flooding um, chaos so those are things that you got to think about but I thought it was interesting that they found the church and a couple buildings under the lake looks like a really pretty area very gloomy um, just off in the woods and I, I love places like that buried history also did anybody hear about the Brazilian plane crash that hit a gas station and about 180 190 people died you know I, I know this isn't paranormal related but you know in my opinion man was never made to fly and you know when you read about something like this and then you look at the pictures it's just amazing when the planes hit the ground, nothing's left. Everything's charred. There's just pieces. You know, they're lucky if they ever find entire bodies when they go and they do the autopsies. You know, it's, it's really sad because we can fly to the moon, we can go to space and do all these things, but there is a margin of error. And I guess what a lot of people want to know is can ghost haunt a plane site where a plane's crashed or ground zero and the question to that or the answer rather is yes ghosts can haunt anything they please but it's not always about haunt it's about residual energy that moment you die there's just so much energy so much fear put forth and you die that split second you don't even know you're dying sometimes the half a second because the heat from the jet fuel is so great it actually disintegrates your bones in, in a matter of a second or two so you know, we sit down and you think can they haunt it y yes they could um, when United flight I think it was 93 crashed out near Pittsburgh people say the crash sites they hear a lot of things they see ghosts and I would actually believe it I believe that most of it's residual energy it's not a conscious being but the energy is like an imprint in time our last story 
It's going to be about a miracle called Miracle Man Walks Again. And basically the article starts off saying he survived against all the odds. Now Pang Shulin has astounded doctors by learning to walk again when his body was cut in two by a lorry in 1995. And they said it was a little short of a medical miracle that he lived. His body from his pectorals and up is his body. Everything else below that is gone. But mankind is building a lot of technology which is advancing our lifespan even due to accidents like the Incot we have. Just like the story I heard about the flesh-eating bacteria. A guy goes fishing, gets flesh-eating flesh bacteria. He's fighting for his life. He's got to have this amputee, that amputee. And, you know, one day with a little bit of cloning, um, stem cell research, we might be able to regenerate limbs. So, you know, these medical advances that we're making are unbelievable and we'll be able to increase the life of man. But that's not going to do no good if we keep polluting the earth, drugging our foods, you know, and then you got to take into account more population means more disease, more illnesses, and wars, and you know, the whole planet's in chaos right now. It's not as simple as it was a couple hundred years ago where, you know, you chopped your own firewood, lived out in a cabin out in the woods, you hunted for your deer, and, you know, things were very simple back then. And now we live in a society where almost everybody meets a Ghostbuster. I, I swear on this. You know, everybody seems to write me and... You know, they're a Ghostbuster, and this person's a Ghostbuster, and, you know, it takes more than just looking for ghosts to be a Ghostbuster. You know, it's, there's a lot of responsibilities that come to owning an organization and to being an investigator. And our group tries to keep an open mind. You know, we're not out to debunk anything or disprove that it don't exist. We just try to find evidence, and we try to share that with the public. Um, I guess we have time for one more story. I'll go ahead and do one last one. Um, I hope you find it interesting. It's about a Friday the 13th ghost investigation at a haunted pub. It goes on to say a paranormal investigation is due to be carried Friday the 13th to see how haunted a Pendle pub is. And the four alls in and high ham will be visited by a team of paranormal experts tomorrow after the claim that the pub is haunted by up to three ghosts. It goes on to say that one of the famous Pendle witches, Chaddix, is believed to have put a curse on the high ham farmer's livestock and later killed the farmer's son and was also accused of turning the pub's beer sour. And then it goes on about bodies being stored in the basement before moving in the graveyard across the road. So it's got a lot of stories about witches and paranormal activity. And of course, the team that was going to check it out said that it was just coincidence that they actually had the only free time on Friday the 13th. Um, but, you know, I want to talk about Friday the 13th. You know, some people are very superstitious. Um, as one member said, a lot of people die in car accidents on Friday the 13th. And I honestly think it's a mindset. I think people panic, are paranoid. I think the brain's doing one thing and the body's doing another. To me, you know, it's just a day. It sounds cool, you know, it's cool to go ghost busting on Friday the 13th, but, you know, from my experience, ghosts are going to continue to haunt every day, any hour. It doesn't have to be just Friday the 13th. Of course, for you superstitious people, you might think Friday the 13th is bad luck, but believe it or not, I've met some people who had nothing but good luck on Friday the 13th. But I thought this haunted pub was interesting because we have done a haunted pub and I remember when I studied my photos I had a little girl up in the window. It wasn't ectoplasm, wasn't an orb. It was blonde hair, red lips, pale face looking at me through the window. And you know that goes back a few years ago when I was with the guys. It was humid. I was running around on my investigation without a shirt, climbing things and I remember Jason, who's going to be moving up north, he was with me at the time, and I said, Jason, I said, don't walk on the floor, it's rotted. And he said, oh, I'll be okay, I'll be okay. Well, he goes to the floor, and he 
steps down on it and he falls through and he's hanging by a thread his hands are hanging out the floor has got him all tight around his body and he's just he doesn't know what to do he starts panicking because if he falls it's a good drop into a pit of water with dead rats and animals and garbage it was just so nasty and I pulled him out but he almost went through and that's why you don't walk on weak floors even if they look weak you don't even go near them you just don't fuss because they could still give way and that's what happened but we have done a haunted pub and you know it was very interesting because it was like one of those old western inns you had the upstairs you had a few rooms the downstairs was the bar and the recreational room so it was pretty interesting also the Perseid if I pronounced it correctly meteor shower is going to take place next month August 12th and 13th it's something nice to watch you know you grab your friends have a few drinks and watch it you know on my investigations I'd have to say I've seen hundreds of shooting stars you know I spend a lot of time in the woods doing night hikes looking for Bigfoot and such and it's really amazing one night I seen a fireball go over my head really low that was up where I live now and you know it's just I live near woods I live near a state park I don't go there enough I know what's there at night I'm not scared of it but on the other hand we leave things be once we know they're there because we want to respect the habitat that it lives in but anyways we were with a group of people and we were walking down this road in the middle of the woods gated at night so you know there's no cars or anybody back there and right above the trees a slow moving fireball went above us and just vanished it looked like a flare but it was right above the trees it was traveling from left to right and I got a good few second visual on it so you know a lot of strange things do go on you know the the downside to me moving away from Florida is I really do enjoy the hauntings out here Florida is a very haunted state it's always some kind of activity on our investigations it may take us going to five six places but we get good activity we hear screams ghostly voices see things we can't explain but I'm looking forward to going out west, looking forward to the mountains. Um, we have a long, prosperous future. Our forums may be non-existent soon because nobody's participating, and I'm not going to run groups that nobody cares about or participates. And lastly, I would like to go over a little something. We had a guy a couple years ago join the Paranormal Ghost Society forum. I mean, he seems like a really nice guy. He's into the paranormal and likes to go fishing and adventure in the places. And you know, unfortunately, we had a fallout. You know, I consider him a friend, but you know, the problem is with a lot of members, they think I'm their girlfriend and they have a need to lie and not tell me the truth. And you know, nobody has to make up stories with me if you can't afford to donate or you can't make it to the investigation. Just tell me. But he skipped out on the caves adventure after bragging on the list he would help. Did not notify me. And, you know, I took his posting privileges away because, you know, he was supposed to be a publicist. And he consistently let me down. And I did send him the information, which he claims he didn't get. It's like he was too sick to contact me to do the investigation. Yet I see him posting on the web, you know, and it's like... There's no need to lie to me. The Paranormal Ghost Society will be honest with you if you'll be honest with us. And, you know, he got mad because I, he tried to say, I'll send you a donation, take the block off. I was like, keep the money. So I don't want money. I want loyalty. I want honesty in my members and my investigators. And so he actually got very hostile the other day or unfriendly and said, we fake our picks or paint shop poem or whatever the case is and we're not a mature organization blah 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 problem with that is that you know I have to stick to my rules and sometimes I have to play the bad guy because I can't have favorites I can't say well it's okay if you break the rules and then go ahead and ban somebody else you know it's just not fair but you know the truth is that I run the site I own it I take the pictures I can edit my photos in any way 
I don't edit my photos, but I do add a copyright and watermark in them because I want people to know, well, yeah, I took it. And besides, it's our work, so it's copyright. We do copyright it. And that's the whole problem. You know, people expect us to put full-size pictures up on the web. And, you know, when you scan them, they come out a million bytes big. They're, they're bigger than your monitor screen. So, of course, we edit our photos. We have to edit them in the fact that we got to shrink them down in size. we got to highlight what you're looking at. we got to watermark them. But that doesn't make us a fraudulent group. Um, he also said that the articles were not that good. The problem is, is that, you know, I send out 30 to 40 up-to-date paranormal articles daily. They are the best editorials and articles. Ghost stories, odd articles, articles about Bigfoot and cryptozoology, and about the science of ghosts and ancient places. We send out a lot of good information, a lot of good pictures, and... You know, when people don't get their way, they start to complain and they start to demean the group. But we're a very consistent organization. And we're very big. And we get 8 to 10 million hits a year. We just don't produce the funding that we should. Or the participation that we should. Maybe out west it'll be different. It may take us a lot of journeying before we actually earn respect. But I would like to network with other paranormal communities. You know, I'd like them to help out on our investigations like I would help out any other group on their investigations. But I think I'm going to call it a night. I'm not sure when the next radio show is. Um, these webcasts allow me to speak to my members, discuss a few paranormal topics. It's been fun. I love my fans. I love my members and my friends who support me all the way to the very end. Um, we're going to be cur currently taking applications for interviewing to put together a Californian team of investigators and adventurers and explorers. I have six months left in Florida. I'm going to try to hit a lot of places, a lot of investigations, and wrap up everything on a good note. I will be doing some traveling around the state. I'm not going to go out of state probably till. Uh, probably November I'm going to take the organization and we're all going to pitch in. Probably go to Savannah, which is one of the most haunted cities up in Georgia, actually in the country. And, you know, people compare it to St. Augustine. It's really old. A lot of people die there. It's really haunted. So look for that. The trip to Savannah up in November. Probably Tampa Bay next month. Um, this month, of course, in a couple days, we'll be going up to Key Largo in Miami. I hope to produce at least five to seven places for the website. And that's all we're really doing. We're just gathering history and photos for the website. And we hope that we can get ghosts in those photos. We always don't. But, you know, sometimes what we do is we put stories on our webpage associated with the place. And then, of course, people submit things to me once it's on the site after a while. So I'm looking forward to this trip. I'm going to be doing some snorkeling and a reef over a sunken ship gonna catch some waves it's gonna be a good time and, and that's what it's about I hopefully I'll meet a couple people and get to come along on the investigation we'll have a blast and I you know I would like to thank those who listen in on Angel of Thine Night Radio of course it's not the best show it's no Jeff Rents it's no Nore or Art Bell or anything like that but it is hosted by me personally and I want people to learn about things, and if you ever want something brought up in the radio show, a certain topic you want me to discuss or elaborate on, or you, know, you want to, to ask me a bunch of questions and then have me post them on the radio show, I'll be more than happy to do that, because the radio show is not about me. It's about everybody included, so that way I can communicate and use my freedom of speech, which I do like to exercise pretty often. And sometimes they get you in a lot of trouble. People don't like the honesty. They don't share your beliefs. And sometimes those people show a little bit of hatred towards our organization. But I enjoy what I do. And I'd like to thank you for listening on in. This is Lord Rick, your founder and your host. Good night, folks. And have a safe weekend. And I will see you when I get back from our major season summer investigation opener up in Miami in the Florida Keys. And remember, the truth is out there.